I would say most developing countries are now more vulnerable than they were in 2008 mm. because they're more deeply integrated and more um, fundamentally uh, reliant on debt for expansion. Mm. So uh, first of all, there, I mean, and I think in a way, the point that has already been made, the underlying problem is the inability to tax. So wherever you go, yeah. there is this sort of basic belief among governments that you can't raise revenues. Or if you can, it's only through GA, you know, goods and services taxes and regressive uh, me measures. So if you can't raise revenues, obviously you can't spend beyond a point. So if you need expansion, you're going to go to monetary policy. Or you will go to governments raising debt mm. in order to spend more. Mm. And this is the story everywhere. So we now have in all the successful economies, I'm leaving China out because China is totally sui generis. We can talk about it later. But uh, all the other developing countries, the expansion has been based entirely on debt. And that has come home to roost already in some countries, which are experiencing significant crisis. It's a, the bubble is about to burst in a number of others. So you have a combination of excessive, well, allowing excessive debt in both public and private sectors, and allowing the same kinds of financial deregulation, securitization, you know, derivatives markets, all of the stuff that caused the crisis in the yeah. developed world to play out now. Yeah. It takes very little. It can take a small political change. It can take, you know, the sort of domino effect of other countries. But I think we're going to see it unfold, I would say, even within the next year.